Today's video is one that has been highly requested and these are my favorite fragrances, period. If you're interested, then just keep watching. Hi, my name is Aisha from simplyaisha.com. Here on YouTube, I make videos about fragrance, beauty, luxury, and lifestyle. If those are things you're interested in, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So as I said, today's video is highly requested. These are my favorite fragrances. Now I was gonna do a top 10, but y'all, I don't think I could do it. Like I've done one of those before and I probably could have done it, but I felt like it would have been so many repeats from my last one. So I'm doing a top 20 and I feel like this is actually a better fit for me because I didn't just go for those fragrances that I always say are my favorites. I really thought about what fragrance would I not want to be without. So I'm not doing this in a way where, I know some people when they do these types of videos and they do like their top 10 or their top 20 fragrances for life and they're trying to think about like every season in, what would they wear they need a fragrance for this they need a fragrance for that i didn't do any of that i just went and pulled out the fragrances that i felt like i could not be without and that if something happened to my bottle i would be wanting to buy it immediately so i have 20 actually i have 21 <laughs> but the one i pulled out so we'll talk about that one first actually no we'll talk about that one last <laughs> Other than that, the rest of these will be in no particular order. So these are my top 20 fragrances for my fragrance collection. Now, because we have 20 fragrances here, I will try to be brief so that this video is not 100 minutes long, but I'll still try to give you a pretty decent description of each. So the first fragrance I have in my hand is from Zerzhov, and this is Decus. And yeah, this fragrance is one that I have not had that long but it's made its way into my top 20, which I feel like is quite impressive. So this fragrance to me is a resinous and sweet citrusy fragrance. Um, it smells like there's some sort of lemon and lime, but it also has a resinous quality that gives it a lot of depth. It gives it a lot of interest. It also smells a little bit ambery. It's quite unique, but it is very easy to wear. So I got this probably in the spring and I feel like I made a pretty decent sized dent for me. This is a big bottle, a 100 ml bottle. And yeah, I've been wearing this. I feel like this is perfect for year round. And in the hot weather, this really shines, but it's not a basic citrus. This is definitely a more interesting take on a citrus. It has some depth. So I'm really interested to see how this does when the weather cools down some. I think it's gonna work out perfectly. So yeah, first one is Decas by Zerjoff. This next fragrance is probably another surprise for you all, but this is Minoui et Demi by Fragrance Du Bois. Now this fragrance I actually reviewed when it first came out. I did a love, like, or let down on it. And I don't remember what my final rating was, but I think it was a like. However, this is one that has definitely grown into a love and it's so addictive. So this fragrance to me, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's sexy. When I smell this, I feel like I can pick up cardamom, possibly even a slight coffee note, tobacco, um, and some other spices, maybe like cinnamon or something like that, but nothing is taking over this fragrance. To me, this is just a very well-blended, sweet, spicy, sexy scent that is not too loud. It's kind of a more, a, a, a scent that sits closer to the skin, but I have found that the longer I've had this bottle, the longevity has definitely improved. So I think when I did my review, I was complaining about longevity on this, but I will say now it's not not bad as far as longevity goes for me. Now it's not one of those fragrances that I can spray on at 7 a.m. and smell at 7 p.m. But honestly, this is pretty much a date night fragrance for me or a um, hang out with my husband, watch a movie type fragrance <laughs> um, at home. So yeah, it, it works for me and it's just super addictive to me. I cannot get enough of this scent. So I am happy that I kept this around because <laughs> Initially, y'all, I know it wasn't a love, okay? So, <laughs> Minoui et Demi by Fragrance Dubois. This next fragrance is from Kajal, and this is Lamar. Hopefully, that's not giving you too much of a glare. This is a beautiful, juicy pineapple scent, but that's not the whole story with this fragrance. The pineapple is definitely there. I feel like it's sweet, it's juicy, but this also has some woodiness to it. 
It also kind of smells like there's an ambery note to this and possibly even some saffron giving it some spice. So overall, I would call this more of a spicy, woody pineapple scent, but not in the same way as say Creed Aventus. It's not that type of pineapple. I feel like pineapple is like two distinct kinds for me. It's either the Aventus kind, which to me leans more masculine, or it's the juicy fruity kind like what's in this one. I do think Lamar is perfectly unisex. I have heard some women say this leans masculine to them, but to me, the pineapple sweetness of this just, it's unbelievable. <laughs> So addictive love this I like to wear it during the summer mainly however it can work year-round it has enough presence to it and because of that woodiness and spiciness to it, this fragrance I don't feel like it should be relegated to only summer so again that is Lamar by Kajal this next fragrance has been a love of mine for a while. This is Grand Soir by Maison Francis Kurtjean. So this is probably my favorite amber fragrance. And this is a vanilla amber that's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit sweet. Um, it's almost kind of dry smelling. I know for a lot of women, when they first smell this, they think this smells masculine, but this is one you definitely need to try on your skin. I actually wore this fragrance a couple of nights ago and somehow it must have gotten on my shower cap because since then, since I've been putting on my shower cap, I can smell Grand Soir. It smells amazing. This is super long lasting. It lasts forever on clothes, but it also lasts forever on skin. I actually feel like this projects well too, but it's not like in your face, boom, bow. Like it's very well-rounded and I feel like that makes it easier to wear. So this to me is more of a cold weather scent or a nighttime scent. However, I do like to sneak it in all year round. <laughs> but generally, if I wear this when it's really hot, I'll just wear it around my house. But I love this one. So again, that's Grand Soir by MFK. The next fragrance I have is from Tom Ford and this is Lost Cherry. So I know I don't talk about this fragrance that much anymore, but it's still a love y'all. Y'all see I upgraded to the big bottle. I used up my small bottle. I'm now in the big bottle and that should tell you how much I love this fragrance. This is a beautiful boozy cherry with some almond and some vanilla and it's gorgeous y'all. I feel like I don't need to really spend any time on this but I love Lost Cherry. I typically wear this one mainly for date nights or around my house at night if I'm feeling you know extra I don't know extra <laughs> Then I'll wear this my around my house at night, but it is a gorgeous scent. There's something so sexy about this cherry. And no matter how many cherry fragrances I have tried, I still come back to this one. And this one is still my favorite. So again, that's Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Next up is another newcomer to this lineup. And this is from Electimus. This is Trajan. So yeah, I haven't had this one that long either. This is my citrusy take on Baccarat Rouge 540. Plain and simple. <laughs> it smells like Baccarat. It has that DNA but it's brighter, it's more summery, more citrusy. And this is actually came over and taken the place of the regular Baccarat, the EDP version for me. Of course, I still have that in my collection. I still love it. However, right now I'm loving this one more. <laughs> And I, I don't know what that means, y'all. It's the end of an era. I still love the x straight, but it's not in this video. So there is that. Anyway, <laughs> it probably should have been, but I don't wear it that much. And honestly, I didn't even think about it when I was pulling these fragrances. So that says a lot because I thought about Trajan and I haven't even had this that long, but I love this fragrance. I love that I don't go nose blind to it. Do I think you need this if you have Baccarat Rouge? It depends. A lot of people still think Baccarat Rouge is too heavy for summertime. So if that's you, then maybe check this out. I also feel like this one is slightly less sweet than Baccarat Rouge, but overall they're very similar. But right now I'm loving this one more. So again, that is Trajan by Electimus. This next fragrance is another old love of mine. And I actually don't wear it that much anymore, but y'all, I could never be without it. This is Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. So I have mine in the old bottle. It's in the black packaging. 
But y'all, this is so good. Sweet orange blossom and marshmallow scent. I feel like Love Don't Be Shy started a movement with the sweet marshmallows and the sweet orange blossom scents. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I just feel like it inspired a lot of other fragrances, but I still love this one. There's something about this one that is a tad bit more daring in my opinion than a lot of like sweet orange blossom, marshmallow or candy type scents. I feel like there's something in this one that just takes it to a different level and still makes it special. So although there are a lot of scents out there that kind of smell like this now, this one's still really special to me and although I don't wear it that much because I'm holding on to my precious black bottle juice, <laughs> I still love it and I actually still sniff this fragrance a lot and every time I wear it, like I just get my whole life. So again, that is Love by Killian. The next fragrance I have is from Frederick Mall, and this is Musk Ravageur. Now again, this is a surprising love for me and if you can see, my bottle is quite full, right? <laughs> That's for a couple reasons. Number one, I did go through a sample of this. Number two, I've only worn this like two or three times from this bottle. <laughs> Number three, this fragrance is quite strong. So although I've only worn this like two or three times, I could not imagine myself being without this. This was a love at first sniff. A very surprising love at first sniff for me. So this is a spicy musk. It is not a clean musk though. This is more on the animalic side of musk and for me, it is quite addicting. Don't be scared when people say a musk smells animalic. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be out here smelling like you just walked off a farm. That's not what we mean by that, but it has like almost this skin carnal type quality to it. And I find that that makes it just more addictive to me. It makes it sexier, it makes it different. And yeah, I, I love this fragrance. So although I haven't worn it much, it still made this list. This is not the type of fragrance I would want to wear on a daily basis. This is pretty much just date night for me and I have to be feeling a certain kind of way to wear it. So <laughs> love this. If you have not tried Musk Ravageur, try it out on your skin. I would say you probably want to sample this. Don't blind buy it because um, it is not a safe blind buy, but give it a try if it sounds like something you maybe want to step your toe into. So again, that is Musk Ravageur from Frederick Mall. The next fragrance I have is from Roja, and this is Creation E Parfum Cologne. I love this. It's my sexy Roman Coke fragrance. I feel like I say that every single time I talk about this, but y'all, that's what I get from this. Sexy Roman Coke, simplified. Like this is so good. It's sweet, it's fizzy, it's boozy. It's kind of playful, but it's also sexy and very sophisticated. It's done very well. So if you've been looking to try a fragrance that reminds you of soda but you want something very elevated i would say go for this now this one is marketed towards men however i feel like it's 100 unisex and i will tell you every single time i wear this my husband if he's around compliments me on it every single time so ladies if you're worried about trying this maybe get a sample try it out i actually like to wear this one more so in the heat because i really like the way it bounces off my skin especially if there's a breeze especially if i'm outside but honestly this is perfect for a year-round use so again that's creation e parfum cologne by Roja. The next fragrance is from Tom Ford and this is Black Orchid Parfum. Now, I feel like if you started watching my channel within the last few years or so, you have heard me talk about Black Orchid so many times and that's why I don't talk about it anymore. But I could never not have a Black Orchid in my collection. I mean, I just don't foresee it. This fragrance holds so many memories for me. This is the Parfum version, so let me back up. Okay, so this is the Parfum version. Of course, I originally started out with the regular EDP. I do still have that in my collection. However, I have found that as of lately, this is the one that I go for. And I feel like it's okay because it's still, they smell so much alike that I still smell black orchid when I smell this. I think it's just a slight bit easier to wear. Um, it's modernized a little bit, although black orchid I feel like is timeless. I didn't even talk about how it smells, but 
black orchid is one of those fragrances you need to smell for yourself okay you need to smell it for yourself spray it on your body i'm not even gonna talk about how it smells i will however say that the vibe i get from this is sexy spicy bold this is the type of fragrance i wear out at night this is not really a daytime wear for me this or the original um however it has so many memories tied to it for me. The original Black Orchid, I purchased probably like 2006 or something like that. I don't know. I feel like I purchased it when it first came out and I've worn the fragrance off and on since then. And back when I purchased it, of course, I, I still had a lot of fragrances for me, um, like for a regular person. <laughs> However, um, I didn't have as many as what I have now, and so this was pretty much my go-to date night scent, the original version. This is the updated version. This is the one that I tend to go for now, but I kind of use them interchangeably, honestly. So again, that is Tom Ford Black Orchid Perfume. The next fragrance I have is from Killian, and this is Apple Brandy on the Rocks. So you can see my bottle is almost empty. I thought I was going to finish it this summer, and I still might, y'all, because honestly, I know we're heading into fall, but not where I live. <laughs> but anyway, this fragrance is gorgeous. This is one that has definitely grown on me. Again, I did a review on this when it first came out and I think I complained about the longevity and projection. And still, it's not beast mode. However, this actually performs a lot better in hot weather and there's just something so addictive about this scent to me. So this is a boozy fragrance. I feel like you could smell a mix of like apple and pineapple in this scent. And then you could definitely smell a woody undertone to this scent as well, maybe like oak, but it's all done very transparently. So although those sound like heavy notes, and when you think about apple brandy, that sounds like a heavy fragrance, the On The Rocks makes a difference, y'all. <laughs> It's all done very transparently. This is so easy to wear, but unique and perfect for hot weather in my opinion. I don't really reach for this in the cold. I mean, we don't really get that cold here, but I find that it, this just works better for me on warm skin. So again, that is Apple Brandy on the Rocks. And when I do finally finish this up, I will definitely be purchasing either a refill or these now come in 100 ml bottles so i may go for a 100 ml bottle or i might just purchase a refill of this one i don't know but either way i'm getting it back once i use it up so again apple brandy on the rocks by killian the next fragrance i have is from nishane and this is ani so this is that beautiful green citrusy vanilla with ginger that I cannot get enough of. The vanilla in this fragrance is just top notch. It's sweet, it's dense, but it's not cupcakey. It's very grown up. And when you wear this fragrance, it just really gives you a cloud of fragrance. This is a type of fragrance that when I wear it, I can smell it on myself all day. I don't even need to overspray this. I spray this very moderately because I never want to like go overboard and then <laughs> have a bad impression of it but every time I wear this somebody compliments me on it so other people can smell it on me and I can smell it on myself the entire time which is more important and I just love it there's something so addictive about this I don't wear it that much because I don't want to spoil it so this is not a go to the grocery store type of fragrance for me I tend to wear this when I'm doing something fun or special occasions not that you need to save fragrances for special occasions but I just like to associate like fun memories <laughs> with with my favorite fragrances so yeah that is Ani by Nishane the next fragrance I have is from Dior and this is Feve Delicious. So this is a tonka bean fragrance that is sweet, it's powdery, it's spicy, it's warm. I reach for this fragrance a lot when I want to get a fragrance hug like at nighttime. This is not one that I wear out during the day when it's hot because it's too much, like it's too thick, it's too like sweet, it's too powdery and I don't want to make myself sick wearing it. However, if it's cold or if I'm just going to be in the house or it's nighttime, this is one that I reach for for a fragrant hug. It just makes me feel so comforted, so cozy, and I can smell this on myself the entire time I'm wearing it. It lasts forever. It projects well, but it's not like boom pow, like no sharp edges. 
it's a very well blended fragrance i i find it to smell very round and so therefore i don't find it to be offensive to others although it is a unique scent so yeah love fev this one has been talked about being discontinued off and on so many times so hopefully it's available i don't know <laughs> I've heard rumors of being discontinued and then it's on the website to order. So who knows, but I love this. And if you have this, definitely pull it out, smell it again. So again, that's Feb Delicious by Dior. The next fragrance is from Milano for Grins, and this is Panatone. Now this one is another newcomer to this favorites list because I've only had this for probably about a year. But I love this and there's something nostalgic about this to me. So this is supposed to smell like panettone, which I believe is an Italian dessert bread with some fruit in it. But the memory I associate it with is fruitcake that my great great aunt used to make around Christmas time. So it reminds me of happy times and it smells absolutely delicious. So when I smell this, I get fruit, but think like candied fruits, like a candied orange. And then this fragrance definitely smells bready as well and sweet and delicious and slightly boozy in my opinion, like a dark rum. So good y'all. So, so good. Love this fragrance. I'm really glad that I decided to try this out because it would have been on my wish list for a little bit, but I wasn't familiar with this brand, but now you can see this is a favorite of mine. So again, that's Panatone by Milano Fragrance. The next fragrance I have is from Tom Ford and this is Tobacco Vani. So this fragrance I love and I only wear it when it's cool or cold because unfortunately I feel like it's too spicy and all for me to wear when it's hot. But y'all, every time I wear this, I'm just in love all over again. So this is a spicy tobacco scent. The tobacco in here though is sweet. It's kind of dry smelling like tobacco leaves. And then the vanilla in here is sweet, but not overly so. Um, and it's definitely not fruity at all. Overall, it's a spicy, sweet tobacco vanilla. <sighs> Smells so good. I actually purchased a hand soap um, not too long ago, maybe like a week ago from Home Scents. <laughs> And I think it was called Spice Vanilla. It's actually in my kid's bathroom right now. And y'all, it smells like tobacco vanilla. So every time I wash my hands in that bathroom, I want to wear tobacco vanilla, y'all. I think I might need to go back to Home Sense and see if I can stock up because oh, this is everything. I also have the body spray of this and I layer them together sometimes. And then sometimes if it's not too cold, but I really want to wear tobacco vanilla, I'll just spray the body spray instead of the fragrance. But if I had to pick one, it would definitely be the fragrance. So again, that's tobacco vanilla from Tom Ford. The next fragrance I have is from Rosendo Matu, and this is number five. So this is a sexy, musky fragrance. It is ambery, it's spicy, it smells like there's a little bit of vanilla in here. There's something so addictive about this fragrance to me. Every time I wear this, I want to wear it again. Never fails. Every single time I wear this, I wanna wear it again the next time I spray fragrance. And I feel like that says a lot. I just really vibe with this fragrance. And when I first got this fragrance, I sprayed it on paper because I, you know, I couldn't wait. <laughs> I was going to haul it for you all. So I didn't want to wear it, but I sprayed it on paper and I was like, Ooh, I don't think I like it. I don't think I like it. And it was super hyped. However, when I actually wore it, different story altogether and now i can't get enough y'all i cannot get enough i haven't even had this fragrance for a year and it's already in my top 20 y'all i feel like that's saying a lot this fragrance is not a safe blind buy it's not gonna work for everybody some people think it smells animalic some people think it smells like burning rubber or tires so if you're interested maybe get a sample unless you can find it for an extremely good deal <laughs> Because if you can and you don't like it, you may be able to resell it on Mercari or something, but I love it. So again, that's number five from Rosendo Matteau. 
The next fragrance I have is from Armani Privé and this is Blue Turquoise. So this is my salty vanilla that's so different than any other salty vanilla I've ever smelled. So the vanilla in here is sweet, it's dense, and then the salt note is prominent in this fragrance as well, but you also have like black pepper, incense, woods, and that really differentiates this from every other spicy vanilla fragrance I've ever smelled. This is not gonna be for everybody because I find it to be quite unique Although I wear this mainly in the summer, I honestly feel like because of the depth of it, you can wear it year round. So when I do wear it in the summer, I typically will wear it at night just because I feel like it has this like sexy vibe to it. It stands out a lot. It performs really well and it's just so good y'all. It's so good. Love this one. So again, that's Blue Turquoise from Armani Privé. The next fragrance I have is from Zerjoff and this is Dolce Amalfi. So this is my spicy juicy fruit gum fragrance. <laughs> It smells like a mix of tropical fruits that are quite sweet, like quite sweet, sticky, but then you throw in these Christmas type spices like cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, those type of spices mixed with this sweet fruit is such a juxtaposition, makes it so unique, but so, so good y'all. This is one I can't get enough of. I smell this one all the time. <laughs> I really need to get a bigger bottle because I feel like I would maybe use it more, but I don't even feel like I have to overspray this fragrance. And as much as I talk about it, as much as I love it, I feel like I should just go ahead and get the bigger bottle so I'll be more free with actually wearing it. But it is so good, y'all. So, so good. Yeah. So again, that is Dolce Amalfi by Zerjoff. The next fragrance is from Initio and this is Absolute Aphrodisiac. So this is a spicy vanilla. I clearly have a type. <laughs> I love my spicy vanillas. So yeah, this is a spicy vanilla but not in a boring way. This has this animalic note in it that initially scared me. However, I think that animalic note makes this fragrance so unique, so addictive, so nighttime appropriate. Like this is so good y'all. I, I can't get enough, I can't get enough. I don't wear this when it's hot, so this is one I'm really excited that when it cools down, I'll be pulling it out more. But sometimes even when it's hot, I'll wear it to bed because it's just, it's just one that I cannot get enough of. So if you see that little animal on Fragrantica in the notes of this fragrance, don't let it scare you. Get a sample, try it on skin. This is gorgeous. It also kind of has like a bit of a, almost like a fizzy, nutty nature to it but I don't really know what that's coming from, but I do pick that up and I think that makes me like it even more. So again, that is Absolute Aphrodisiac from Initio. So the last fragrance that's in this actual list before we talk about the one that didn't make it, <laughs> the last fragrance is none other than Amouage Sunshine. Did y'all think I didn't love this anymore? Did y'all really? It's still in my intro. I still love it. <sighs> So good, not for everybody, but it is for me. This fragrance just makes me smile every time I wear it. Again, I don't wear it that much because I want the times that I wear it to be special or not necessarily special. Like it's not like it has to be like something grand that I'm doing. It's just that I don't want to waste this fragrance by like wearing it to a doctor's appointment or anything. I don't want to waste my memories with this fragrance. It's not about wasting the juice because obviously like I have so many fragrances, I'm not concerned about using up my fragrances. It's about wasting the memories attached to this fragrance. So hopefully it makes sense, but this just makes me smile. It's sunny, it's happy. This is a scent that is based on Osmanthus. And to me, in this fragrance, it kind of comes off apricot-y. It also smells a little bit almondy. And then you have this beautiful white tobacco note that I think really sets this fragrance apart. So although it's like an apricot-y, osmanthus scent, there is some depth to this. That white tobacco really just sets it apart. But for some people, that is gonna be the note that really turns you off from this fragrance. Because I have heard some people say it reminds them of ashtrays. I don't get that at all, but I like to share, you know, in case you're sensitive to tobacco scents. But for me, this is just so smooth and sweet and happy. 
very uplifting for me. So again, that is Amouage Sunshine. So those are my top 20. There's one more fragrance I wanna to talk to you about, and this is Zerjoff Italica. So y'all know, Italica was a love for me, right? It was love, but when I was putting all these fragrances together, I had 21 fragrances in my little box, and I looked at them like, really, Aisha, be truthful with yourself. I don't wear Italica as much, and I don't crave it as much. So it's not really about me not wearing it. It's more so about me not craving it as much. This is a beautiful, milky, almond, toffee, pastry scent. It's a very realistic kind of foodie type smell. It also has saffron in it that gives it some spice and a little bit of extra sweetness in my opinion. I find that people either love this or hate this. Now I'm still in the love camp, like let's not get it twisted. But this used to be like really high up for me. So I found it interesting that I would pick all these other fragrances before this one now. I found it really interesting. This is still a love, but let's call it number 21, okay? And I just wanted to mention it because I know I have talked about Italica a lot and I do still love it, but the love has waned a little bit. So we'll see what happens. We are kind of going into the colder season, supposedly. So maybe once it actually gets cold, I will start like fiending for this again. But yeah, this used to be a staple for me. Like I would pull this out in the middle of the summer and wear it just cause I wanted to. <laughs> Even though that's not really the typical time for this fragrance. So yeah, I wanted to mention that. I thought it was interesting. I still love it y'all, but I don't love it like I used to apparently. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this helped you all kind of know my fragrance taste, especially if you're new to my channel. If you have any of these fragrances, let us know what you think of them down below. Will any of them make your top 20 or your top 10? Let us know below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I upload videos every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I have tons of content that you can check out on your free time. Also check out my website. It's www.simplyaisha.com. I would love for you all to check that out and get on my email list over there as well. Also, if you want to connect with me more, follow me on Instagram. I'm typically in my stories almost every day and I'd love to chat with y'all in my DMs. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.